Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. It is the uh, Savage Nation. This is the biggest case since the Julius and Ethel Rosenberg spying case, and I'm going to talk about the analogy between the Clintons, who are allegedly involved in something analogous to the Rosenberg case, but maybe even worse. I'm going to tell you who Julius and Ethel Rosenberg were. And I'm going to tell you who Bill and Claire, Hillary Clinton appear to be. And I'm going to talk about the uranium case. I cannot believe that websites, websites have shifted to a transgendered freak who belongs in a circus. And that's what they're talking about in my sick country. The whole West is sick in the head. You let in radical Muslims and you find out years later that they're plotting to blow someone up? You mean you couldn't figure it out by looking at some of them? In Sardinia, they were sitting there with their big beards, sitting there living off the fat of the land, collecting welfare, having 16 children, and guess what? They were plotting to blow up the Vatican. You wouldn't have thought that, huh? You just wouldn't have thought it because Obama's told you it's the religion of peace. And what have the Republicans done this week? What have they done this week? Why, they lobbied and voted for Obama's attorney general nominee. A lawless, out-of-control attorney general is coming that will make Eric Holder look like, a, like a, a Snow White. That's number one. Your Republicans did that. McConnell and the other Republicans fought for amnesty. McConnell and the other Republicans did not stand up for religious freedom. McConnell and the other Republicans pulled the plug on disapproving of the abortion mandate bill. There are many other things that your government did showing us the trouble we are in because we have an imperial presidency with virtually no government whatsoever. And to prove my point, the day after the disclosure in the New York Times that cash flowed to Bill Clinton in the form of his foundation as the Russians pressed for the control of a uranium company, which is probably the greatest scandal in my lifetime, it's as big as the Julius and Ethel Rosenberg scandal, and I'm going to tell you why I believe there's an analogy. It's bigger than the Teapot Dome scandal, which was nothing compared to this. And it's interesting, when I was in high school, they were telling us about the Teapot Dome scandal. We have a scandal much larger than the Teapot Dome scandal, and perhaps exceeding that of the Rosenberg scandal. And yet we open up the websites and we see Bruce Jenner. We uh, turn to the opposition party that doesn't exist and listen to John Boehner the day after the uranium scandal blows apart in our face. Listen to clip one. Uh, I know the Clintons pretty well. I've, I've served with them uh, here for eight years. I've known them since then. And, uh, you know, they're good public servants. But there are a lot of questions that are being raised. And at some point, they're going to have to answer the questions. They're good people, uh, but there's questions that have to be answered. They're good people? Isn't that what John McCain said about Obama in 2007 during the debates when someone said he's a Muslim and he doesn't love America and that McCain shut her up and said he's, he's a good man? Now you got Boehner saying the Clintons are good people? I mean, you could describe them in many ways. I wouldn't use the word good. I don't think the word good applies. Now, what am I talking about? The Clintons are allegedly involved in something analogous to the Julius and Ethel Rosenberg spying scandal of the 1950s, but some would say it may even be worse. You see, the Rosenbergs stole nuclear secrets and sold them to the Russians. They were American citizens. They conspired to commit espionage, and they passed information about the atomic bomb to the Soviet Union. And they were caught, and they were executed for their crime of treason. That was, that was then, this is now. Now fast forward to 2015. We have a power couple that is not being accused of spying, but of something that may even be worse. Because while the Rosenbergs gave away plans for an atomic bomb, the Clintons gave away the fundamental core of nuclear weapons, which is the uh, uranium ore necessary 
to manufacture nuclear weapons. And by the way, where did this iron ore, or where does this iron ore from our soil end up? Iran? Does it tie into their campaign against Israel? And by the way, why did Obama, why did Obama encourage the transfer of our uranium mines to this strange company, Uranium One, and selling it off to the Russians? Don't tell me he didn't know about it. Don't tell me Mr. Skinny didn't know about it. You can't put two and two together? Obama's been out to destroy our capacity to own and make nuclear weapons from the day this man could say Karl Marx. And so by eliminating our control over our own resources, meaning uranium ore, he makes us less capable of manufacturing nuclear weapons, but he increases Russia's ability to make nuclear weapons, Iran's ability, North Korea. God knows where the ore is going to wind up. Do you know where it's going to go? Do you have any idea where it's going to go? This is the greatest scandal of my entire life. And how do we know, by the way, what the Clintons actually did? We don't. That's why there must be a trial. The only way we can tell if their fingers are involved in this, I mean, it sure looks like they benefited from it. He made millions of dollars, Mr. Bill Clinton, off the transfer, according to the New York Times, the right-wing newspaper. Uranium One's chairman used his family foundation to make four donations totaling $2.35 million, not publicly disclosed by the Clintons. That's chicken feed, by the way, for what really happened. Shortly after the Russians announced their intention to acquire a majority stake in Uranium One, Bill Clinton received $500,000 for a speech in Moscow from a Russian investment bank with links to the Kremlin that was promoting Uranium One stock. You say, holy God, this is, this is impossible to believe. And forget the ethics of it. How about national security? Doesn't it enter your stupid mind? There is no national security, just stupidity. All you care about is transsexuals and butt implants. That's the nation that we live in. By the way, take a look at the president. This is a totally separate issue, but he's shrinking away. The amazing shrinking man. We're asking ourselves why he's so thin, and my producer said he may be um, on one of Michelle's school lunch diets. He may be experimenting to see if it's uh, as bad as the kids say. Yes, it could be that the president's getting this thin from Michelle's school lunches, which contain a tray, a knife, a fork, and a glass of water, not even the proverbial slice of bread they give prisoners. That's her idea of America while she eats French fries and anything else she can get her hands on. So as I say, this is a big story. Julius and Ethel Rosenberg came to mind. I wouldn't say it's directly analogous, but it's somewhat analogous to the Clintons. But only a trial will tell us whether or not they had their fingers on the transfer. And whether or not the uh, chairman of our Senate Intelligence Committee and her husband had anything, or let us say, any knowledge of this transfer. If Dianne Feinstein, as chairwoman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, did not know about the transfer of America's uranium ore to Russia, then she should be thrown out on her dirty skirt. Her skirt's been dirty from the day she was the mayor of the sickest city in America. She's the chairwoman of the Senate Intelligence Committee. Diane Feinstein, and she didn't know about the transfer of the ore, so either she didn't know about it or she did know about it. If she knew about it and she didn't say anything about it, then she's complicit in this crime. If she didn't know about it, then she should be fired immediately, but who am I appealing to? I'm only appealing to the American voters, not to that piece of garbage, John Boehner, that useless piece of garbage. I wouldn't use him as a clothing dummy. John Boehner has less utility than a mannequin in a store. At least you know it's a mannequin. Can you believe he says the Clintons are good people after a scandal like this? And isn't it odd that all the time we were transferring uranium ore to Russia, Obama was calling Putin Hitler, Hillary Clinton was calling uh, Putin Hitler. How is that possible? And by the way, don't we have a nuclear non-proliferation treaty with Russia? Then what do they need the ore for? And why would we give it to them? The questions I have raised in the last, I would say, nine or ten minutes are worthy of a six-month to one-year investigation by a team of reporters. I'm only a talk show host asking questions that anyone with any degree of intelligence and love for America would ask. If you get a comment on any of these questions, including who signed off on the transfer of the ore, was Feinstein involved or not, 
who else in the government was involved and signed off on it, because we're going to get into that. We've got some answers for you. Believe me, we're going to talk about it. Where'd the ore go? How does the ore get to Russia? Is it shipped, uh, is it sent over by airplane? How do they send the uranium ore to Russia? Or is it worse than you think? Are we actually weaponizing the uranium and turning it into fissionable material here and sending it to Russia? We don't even know how far this goes, do we? The phone number here is 855-497-282. I'm only a talk show host looking from the outside in. We have no government. We have a zero government, no government whatsoever. There is no government. We have a dictatorship. We have one-man rule. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. We are talking about the greatest scandal in modern American history, about the transfer of America's uranium mines to a Russian holding company, a deal signed off by the United States State Department while Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State, during which time Bill Clinton profited in the mega millions of dollars in donations to his foundation and for paid speeches. Now, as you well know, you're never going to prove that they were directly involved in this. No way you can do it. They're too clever for that. They're not running these operations. He wasn't president because he doesn't know how to do these things. How does Obama get away with what he gets away with? How? So the issue is we need a um, hearing. We need a Senate hearing. The Republicans allegedly control the Senate, and they're not talking about it, are they? You're talking about nothing. And so I'm making a comparison to a scandal of when I was a little boy, Julius Rosenberg, born to Jewish immigrant parents in New York City, became a leader in the Young Communist League of USA while at City College in New York, a hotbed of communism in those days, married Ethel Greenglass, uh, joined the Young Communist League where she met Julius in 1936. And these two young communists eventually spied for the Soviet Union. Now, during these, the trial of the Rosenbergs, there was a lot of hysteria in America by communist fellow travelers, socialists, who said the Rosenbergs were the victims of a surge of hysterical anti-communist feelings in the United States. It was a result of anti-Semitism. You know, the usual stuff. They said that the death sentence handed down to the Rosenbergs was cruel and unusual punishment. There were people then just like there are now. But what you don't know is... In time, the Soviets released the Venona Papers, which I read when they were released in the 90s. And the Venona Papers, later on released, these were uh, originally hidden, hidden papers, guarded, no one even knew what they were. They were released, and they proved beyond a reasonable doubt that they were actual spies. You hear? And you have to understand that they were grand jury transcripts and whatnot which proved beyond a reasonable doubt that this pack of uh, anti-American vermin deserved to be executed. Remember, in 1995, the results of the Venona decryption project were released by the U.S. government. And among these was a Soviet intelligence cable of September 21, 1944, from New York Station to Moscow Center, which read in Paul, liberal, that was a code word, recommended the wife of his brother, Ruth Greenglass. She is 21 years old, a townswoman, Gorazanka, a gymnast, since 1942. Liberal and his wife recommend her. Ruth learned that her husband is now working at the enormous plant in Santa Fe, New Mexico. You see, he was working at Los Alamos, this piece of garbage. He worked for the U.S. Signals Corps. And uh, Liberal was a code name for the spy Julius Rosenberg. And a uh, former member of the Young Communist League, it was not, not to be unexpected that he would spy for the Soviet Union. So they were executed for their crime and it turned out that although they were communist fellow travelers progressives in their time who said it was anti-semitism victims of a of the mccarthy era no they were actual spies who gave the soviets the ability to build to build a nuclear weapon at the trial it all came out it's a big story you should read it it's an amazing story it's been written many different times so what does it have to do with today it has a lot to do with today 
somebody is responsible for transferring uranium ore in the ground in America to Russia. Now, what is uranium used for? It's not made to make doorbells. Uranium is used for one reason only, and that's to make nuclear weapons. So who in the U.S. government would let that happen unless they were out to weaken America's capacity to defend itself? And if that is the case, then we must know who it was in the American government who signed off on this. And they must be tried the way the Rosenbergs were tried. Or am I mistaken? It's nothing, right? You'd rather talk about Bruce Jenner and his transgender psychosis in order to be in the limelight for another 10 seconds? That's the world you want to live in? Some of us still care about America, and some of us care about our children and our children's children, and some of us think that we're living with the most rotten group of governmental criminals that we've ever seen in our lifetime. WABC Scott, go ahead, please. What's on your mind? Well, Michael, I've been reading about uh, this thing today, and there are apparently seven to or eight cabinet members who signed off on this deal as well, and what that means is that the president had to be in the, uh, aware of it. And... Well, of course he was aware of it. Don't you remember Obama's goal was to eliminate nuclear weapons in his lifetime? So by eliminating our ability to manufacture fissionable material and therefore not make nuclear weapons, isn't he on the road to doing what he wanted to do, which is to make us absolutely impotent in the world? That's, that's the plan. And, you know, oh, there you go. And I'm only a talk show host. I'm not John Boehner. He's far more intelligent than I am. He knows the Clintons personally. He said that they're good people. So don't trust Michael Savage. Trust John Boehner. Trust Barack Obama, the amazing disappearing president. Don't trust anything I say. Don't use common sense. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. We move forward when women who came to this country in search of a better life can earn a path to citizenship. Right now, they are being forced to work outside the formal economy, often being subjected to discrimination and even worse. You know, our mothers and sisters and daughters are on the front lines of all these battles, but these are not just women's fights. These have to be America's fights and the world's fights. We have to take them on, we have to win them together, and we have to have leaders who recognize that the time has come. So this is after the uranium scandal. This woman has the nerve to push for amnesty for illegal aliens saying that they're victims. It gets worse. You thought she'd resign? You're mistaken. And if you think she's bad, it's going to get even more worse than her. The only good news is that Jeb Bush is finished. The only good news is that that fraud on the other side is finished. He's fallen behind even the ice cream man, Rubio, the nobody. The nobody. Even the, the Rubio, the ice cream man, is moving ahead of the uh, Bush. The reason is, is that the Bush name is, is the third rail of politics. He's finished. It's toxic. But then again, who knows, with illegal aliens voting, it could be a Bush versus Hillary contest, and it wouldn't matter whether we vote or not. So if you want to talk about any of these topics, 855 400 I've given it my best. My first nine minutes were worthy of uh, commentary around the world. I compared the uranium scandal to the Julius and Ethel Rosenberg spying scandal of the 1950s, and I believe it went over like the proverbial lead balloon because most people don't know who Julius and Ethel Rosenberg are, never heard of them, and they can't make the connection between the two because there's no historical memory in the United States of America. But that's my job as a former scholar to remember things and put them together and put things in context because I do remember uh, the Spanish philosopher Santayana's great warning, those who do not know their history are condemned to repeat it, so therefore, we're talking about history. And there's Bill Clinton getting up like nothing happened, making believe there was no money changed, no benefit to him from the deal. There's Hillary pushing the old story of women are victims, gays are victims, illegal aliens are victims, and the evil white male is the perpetrator of everything bad on the earth. I wouldn't be surprised if she doesn't come out in a burqa during the campaign. Hiding behind a burqa would be a very good ploy. 
She could get a uh, uh, she could be a woman, then she could be a minority at the same time. She can go on to the sympathies of the idiots in the universities. Eight five five four hundred seven two eight two is the phone number. Mark on WABC. Go ahead. You're on the uh, Savage Nation. What's on your mind, Mark? Yeah, I was just wondering. Maybe they sold the uranium for energy use. Maybe it's not weaponry. I was just wondering. <laughs> That's a very good point. That's really good. But why would we get rid of our uranium and and eliminate our ability to to make our own weapons? It was a business transaction. America is free business. Well, why would we get rid of uranium since we need the uranium for our own nuclear energy plants? Otherwise, we're going to have to buy it from somebody. Who would we buy it from? North Korea. We're producing our own. How are we producing it if we just sold it to Russia? We're mining it. We're creating our own. I don't think you understand the case. They sold the mines. Don't you understand that, Mark? All the mines. Oh, so you don't know the story? You came in late to the discussion. Probably. What were you studying? The Bruce Jenner case? No, I was studying. Are you interested in transgender issues? Is that it? Absolutely not. All right, well, good. Well, you know, get yourself up to speed. There's probably a used New York Times laying around somewhere in the gutters of New York. It's the lead story on even in the New York Times. It's so shocking that even the boys uh, on Herald Square had to cover the story. They can't believe it. Even the boys at the New York Times had to awaken from their uh, slumber. Front page story about this. How dirty it looks. New York Times story, not a right wing paper, unless it's become one. They could now be, I guess, Sulzberg is now part of the vast right-wing conspiracy. Let's go to the callers. WJR in Detroit. Todd, you're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Uh, yeah, I'm wondering uh, that we, uh, we, the American people, showed uh, the federal government up in D.C. Uh, that we wanted um, different, uh, different leadership up there with the midterm elections. And uh, it seems that... Uh, that our votes and, and the people that we put in are just are still powerless and weak. And so I'm wondering what your views are on what is going to incentivize us as the American people and people who believe in conservatism uh, to continue voting, or is there possibly a need for another party? Um, yeah, well, I've covered. Here's the problem. It's a very complicated question, and there's you know a couple of simple answers and there's a couple of long answers. I, I devoted many shows this year to the Nationalist Party, which I, I mentioned to my audience I would create if I felt America had 20 more years and I had 20 more years to work to create it. It would take 20 years for a party to make any dent in the national system, but I would create the Nationalist Party as the, the, uh, the party. But if we do that, then there would be no Republicans elected for the next uh, uh, 20 years for sure, because any defectors from... The Republican Party would uh, just add votes to the Democrat machine. So it's not a good idea to create a third party, which is exactly why they have us where they want us. Frauds and criminals like uh, those in the Republican Party. It's basically a gangster regime. The gangster Republican Party knows that they have lied to the conservative voter. They got your vote. Then they said, drop dead. We don't need you for another four years. We could care less what you think. Drop dead, go away, don't bother us, you stink. Tea party, choke on your tea, die on it for all we care. Take your talk radio and shove it. They're laughing at us. They're worse than the Democrats. And the reason they're worse than the Democrats is because we know who the Democrat Socialist Islamist Party is. The Democrat Socialist Islamist Party is what it is. And the Republican Party had several different planks in it including a conservative uh, wing, they had that wing clipped. It was cut off after the election. Several excellent young people were sent to Congress. They were put at the back of the bus. They did not even sit in the front rows during the State of the Union address. This evildoer, John Boehner, who was Osama bin Laden with a suit. John Boehner is Osama... You know, Osama bin Laden did not do as much damage to the American political system as John Boehner is doing to the system right now. For him to wake up the day after the uranium scandal and say that the Clintons are good people is beyond anyone's comprehension. But he is a problem, so is McConnell the gobbler. McConnell is the gobbler, Boehner is the drunk, that's who represents the Republican Party. So where are the, where are the so-called nationalists within the Republican Party? Nowhere to be seen. Boehner stripped them of all committee assignments, uh, soon after they were appointed because they tried to uh, push too far ahead on the conservative agenda. 
I did not expect Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton to get up today and say we're sorry that we did this to America. We want to be tried for the crimes we committed against America. We're going to give back all the hundreds of millions of dollars we got, and we'd like to be tried before the for the whole world to see because we had an epiphany. I didn't expect that, but I expected one Republican would be screaming about the national security implications and asking where was Diane Feinstein. Is Richard Blum and his business interests at all involved? Asking why there were seven cabinet members who signed off on the transfer of the uh, uranium ore to Russia, all the while Hillary was screaming that he was uh, that Putin was Hitler. I mean, this is a huge story. And you wake up and nothing happens. Like I can't believe what I'm looking at. This is not true. I feel as though I'm living in another dimension, my own world. And you know, I would say that if my audience had been getting smaller every month that I was on the wrong track but it's actually getting larger every month the show is growing every month and the show is number one in New York City on WABC in the day parts by the way in March it's a big deal it's a very big accomplishment given that I'm not a member of the Rush Limbaugh cartel given that I have no publicity given that I'm banished by Roger Ailes and Rupert Murdoch from Fox News Given all of those impediments, the show is still thriving, not only in New York City, but elsewhere. Why? Well, I'll give you the answer why. There's only one reason for it. There's two, re there's two answers to it. Hemingway said the truth has a certain ring to it. I grew up worshipping and idolizing Hemingway when I was a young writer. I wanted to be a writer. He said the truth has a certain ring to it. That's number one. And earlier than Hemingway, I was uh, a young naturalist. I read the 19th century naturalist, uh, his writings, uh, William Burroughs. He was an amazing man. And William Burroughs wrote something very, very poetic. He said, if you bait your hook with your heart, the fish will always bite. So there's an audience for the truth. It hasn't been banished from America yet. I'm not a member of the Fulon Gong. The government has not yet become as draconian as the Chinese. They're not yet removing the kidneys of talk show hosts if they dare take on the power structure. And the people know it. And they know that we are the last voices left in the United States of America. And they know that our resources are being raped and sold to our enemies. You're not going to argue Russia's not our enemy now, are you? I didn't think Russia was our enemy, but Hillary Clinton said they are. Obama said they're our enemy. So at the same time, they're telling us that Russia's our enemy, they're selling them our uranium ore? So which way do you want it? They're our enemy or they're not our enemy? See, I see what I'm saying to you? Does it make sense to you? So there's the whole story. At the same time, Obama's trying to make us, render us unable to make any nuclear weapons whatsoever. The man is such a cra crazy, anti-American lunatic. You know, I was on the road this morning going out for a newspaper. I had to take the car to the little town I'm in. And I made a turn outside of town on a back street to get back on the main road to get out from the traffic. And a woman was coming at me in the wrong direction on a one-way street. And no matter how I signaled her, telling her she was driving the wrong way, she gave me the finger. And I said, she reminds me of Barack Obama. He's going the wrong way on a one-way street. And no matter what the American people say to him, he gives you the finger and says, drop dead. You're going the wrong way. I don't care which way the signs are. And he gets away with it. Why? Because there is no government. Do you understand what that means? A government is supposed to be a government of many different levels with checks and balances with two parties and it's supposed to be a vigorous press that stands outside and acts as the uh, the uh, element that goads government into proper behavior well there's a little bit of everything in what I just said we were shocked to see it was the New York Times that broke the story not a right-wing newspaper on the uranium transfer and you have to give them credit for that and they ask yourself why all of a sudden would the New York Times be the newspaper breaking the story on the ties between the Clinton Foundation, the Russians, and the uranium. Why would they be the ones doing it? So you have to ask yourself that question. And you'll come up with many different uh, reasons, answers, conspiracies. But the point is we still have a press in America here and there. We still have a voices of freedom, and we still have the First Amendment. But unless we stand up as a group, we're going to lose all of what I just mentioned to you. Hillary Clinton would take away talk radio as I'm sitting here. She would crush whatever remnant there is of a free press. 
We would be living in the equivalent of the Soviet Union if she is ever elected. That's what's at stake here. ABC, CBS, NBC, once in a while something sneaks out. There are brave men and women inside those organizations. They know what's going on. They're not all stupid. They're not all sold down the river. They're not all on drugs. Many of them try to get these stories out. And sometimes they succeed, sometimes they don't. This morning I woke up. Uh, Fox News had a story, Tangled Clinton Webb, firms tied to Clinton's profit in post-Quake Haiti. You hear this? There's not a crisis on the planet where they didn't make money. Do you understand this? So when you see Hillary Clinton pushing amnesty for illegals, you can guarantee that hundreds of millions of dollars are going to flow into her hands or the husband's hands or the, or the foundation. You get it? New York Post editorial board. The Clinton Foundation is Bill and Hillary's New York-style racket. Emphasis on the word racket. Thursday was a banner day in the unfolding scandal of the Clinton Foundation. We learned that a Russian government-controlled company has taken control of one-fifth of all uranium-producing capacity in the United States by acquiring a Canadian firm whose chairman, Frank Juistra, has pledged over $130 million to Bill Clinton's foundation. You're telling me there is, there's nothing there and not worthy of investigation? And that Clinton also got $500,000 in speaking fees from a Russian bank that had been promoting the Canadian firm stock? And Hillary Clinton's State Department signed off on the acquisition, which has deep national security implications? And that Frank Juistra also reaped huge profits when Hillary reversed her earlier clear and firm opposition to a trade deal with Colombia? And her ex-president husband, meanwhile, actively promoted the agreement the same month? He accepted $800,000 for speeches delivered after flying on Juistra's private jet to a pro-agreement group in Colombia? What about Senator Men Menendez? He was busted for chicken feed compared to this. They went after Menendez for flying on a donor's jet, didn't they? Well, here's Bill Clinton doing it. I mean, what Menendez did or didn't do is tiddlywinks compared to this. Where is the outcry? I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Extra, extra, hear all about it. Greatest scandal in modern American history covered up by the newspapers, Clinton corruption reaching the level of sedition is it new york times says cash flow to the clinton foundation and bill clinton himself as russians pressed for control of the uranium company that now controls uh, one-fifth of the united states uranium ore sold to russia not a peep from the republicans other than the useless john boehner a man who has done more damage to the american body politic than Osama bin Laden did by saying today not that we're going to look into this but that the Clintons are good people I saw an article in the British Telegraph this morning that an evil twin was found in a student's brain using radical neurological surgery the doctors found an embryonic twin in the brain of this individual this woman from India she couldn't uh, concentrate she couldn't read she had trouble uh, figuring things out well, they went into the brain and they found that there was a, an evil twin inside, a teratoma, a rare unborn twin inside of her brain. I just ask myself, is this the disease that has infected Washington? Have all of them been infected with an evil twin inside their brain? One that hates the nation? Think about it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. There are those who offer themselves as leaders who take a very different view, who offer themselves as leaders who see nothing wrong with denying women equal pay, who offer themselves as leaders who would defund the country's leading provider of family planning and want to let health insurance companies once again charge women just because of our gender. There are those who offer themselves as leaders who would deport mothers working to give their children a better life rather than risk the ire of talk radio. Imelda Marcos would be, would be preferred to Hillary Clinton. Imelda Marcos, I'd rather vote for Imelda Marcos than this woman. Okay, so the day after the uranium scandal blows up in their faces, she's lecturing about women and denying women equal pay and uh, contraception, unequal pay to women, sexual assault and military, uh, illegal should get amnesty. The same old lie, the big lie that got her where she is and that lets the money flow into the Clinton Foundation, she keeps it going. My producers found a little article on the uranium scandal that none of you heard today on talk radio. Nobody found it. The Rush cartel missed it, despite their vast staff. The Fox cartel missed it. I can guarantee you, no matter what Brett Bear does, when he does his big thing tonight on the uranium thing, he won't have what I'm about to give you. Has he been on yet or not? He's coming up next. Next hour. Here it is. I shouldn't do it. Maybe I should wait till he's off the air. Do it in my third hour. Uh, if I do it now, it'll be on the Brett, it'll be on the Fox News show. No, if I give it out to you now, then Brett Bear will, will have it on his show. Ailes will make sure he gets it. They may even get, uh, you know, because look, they can't have Savage beat them to the punch. I don't exist. All right. This came out in the year 06. It was appearing in the Durango, Colorado newspaper, called the Durango Telegraph. You're not going to believe the title, How Russians Got Our Uranium. No one in talk radio has found this other than my crack producer, Jim Verde. And here's the article. The Russians are coming to the southwest and plan to take much of the region's uranium home with them. The Russian government, which recently purchased the mining company Uranium One, has big designs on uranium reserves in Utah's Canyon Country and has opened an office in Durango. Watchdogs are concerned that the U.S. is effectively giving away resources to foreign companies and that locally mined and milled yellow cake will soon find its way to Iran. Last week, a Tom Dredemozolo, I can't pronounce it, A-R-M-Z, a mining conglomerate owned by the Russian government, completed the purchase of Uranium One, a Canadian company. A-R-M-Z's parent company is Rosatom, the Russian nuclear agency, and the deal went forward in spite of objections from four members of the U.S. Congress and the U.S. Department of Treasury inquiry. Now, remember when this was. This was in 06. 06. Long before Imelda was Secretary of State. The deal gave ARMZ, operating as Uranium One, control of all of the Canadian company's international assets, which stretch from Central Asia to the Central United States. Among those assets is control over more than... 10,000 acres of uranium mining claims in southeast Utah, ownership of the Utah town of Tickaboo near Lake Powell, and control of the inactive Shutaring uranium mill there. The consolidation makes Uranium One the fifth largest uranium producer in the world. Shortly before the transaction, the Russian company opened the regional headquarters in Bodo Park, Utah. A few more paragraphs for those of you who are bored already and would rather talk about transgendered actors. The perspective on the ground in the southwest does not reflect Zivov's optimism. Courtesy of a loophole in the 1872 mining law, the Russian government operating as Uranium One will be tapping the region's uranium virtually free of charge. The mining law was signed into law by President Ulysses S. Grant in order to encourage rapid settlement of the American West. The law continues to allow companies to stake and develop mining claims without paying royalties to the United States government. We've been seeing this trend for the last 10 to 15 years. Remember, this was written in 06. Explain Jeff Parsons of the Western Mining Action Project. Multinational companies have gradually been taking over mineral rights all over the West. Then they benefit greatly from our 19th century mining policy, where they essentially get the minerals for free and never have to pay a royalty. Conclusion. 
The case of Uranium One could be an especially difficult pill to swallow. First, the Russian government will be tapping the West's uranium free of charge and likely exporting it to Europe and Asia. Second, ARMZ has acted as the source of uranium for Iran's rogue nuclear program, meaning that yellow cake mined in Utah could find its way into reactors in Tehran. How Russians got our uranium, Durango Telegraph, 110106. And you heard it first on the Savage Nation. The story came out shortly after the Clintons did a deal with Kazakhstan. Now let's go to some callers. WABC Russell, you're on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Please. You know, this type of stuff is taking place, and Hillary can get is probably going to get away with this because she's protected by the globalists. You know this. No. Nope. Right, well, well, you know, statements like that are wonderful, but what do you really mean? Who are the globalists? Who are they? The globalists, the same people that meet at the Bilderberger Group. All right, please see. This is the kind of like half-witted stussel. Thank you. You're listening too long to the Rush Cartel. I mean, they've gotten people like you into work using, you know, code words, globalists, Bilderberg. It all sounds intelligent. You know, for a long while, the key, key word was uh, uh, Alinsky. Many of you didn't know Alinsky from a, a bagel. But then you thought you were intellectual giants because you learned about Saul Alinsky. And for three years, talk radio was buzzing with Alinsky, Alinsky. Obama learned from Alinsky, Alinsky. Now it's globalists and, uh, oh, come on already. Here's the thing about talk radio that's so tiring. I'm trying to tell my call screener, unless the caller asks a question that's really insightful that will advance the conversation or add something to the conversation, please don't put them up. But please don't give me the Limbaugh cartel leftovers. You understand? So we'll try another one and I'll see if I'm going to get mad at my callers now. Don't be intimidated. You can still call the show. And oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. Boys and girls, I promised to give out free copies of my forthcoming great novel Countdown to Mecca to all the callers. I didn't give one out. I'm really, I'm, I'm really wiped out for today. I'm exhausted. It's been a long week. It's Friday. You know it's Friday, right? Uh, I'm away from my normal location. We had technical problems Tuesday and Wednesday that almost gave me a heart attack. Thursday was good. So far, Knockwood, excellent today. No problems with, with Comcast knocking my system down. And while I left the West Coast because my allergies were killing me and came to the East Coast, now the allergies are kicking in again because it got hot here and all the flowers are in bloom. So it seems I'm constantly running away from... From from pollen, I don't. I probably have some kind of either Lapland blood or Eskimo blood. I belong on an ice flow somewhere. If only there was a nice village with a floating radio station. Maybe the Antarctic. Maybe I could move to Vostok in the Antarctic. Look at the Vostok ice uh, core evidence while I'm there and do a radio show from there. I wonder if the scientists on the Antarctic ice flow, or on Antarctica, which is a continent, of course, suffer allergies. I, I don't know. There's no plant life that I can speak of. Again, I'm looking at the president. I'm there. He's the amazing shrinking man, and we looked into this, and people are speculating that Obama is shrinking away in size because he's been experimenting with Michelle Obama's school lunches for well over three months now. And there's only so much caloric content in a fork, a knife, a glass of water, and a string bean. Uh, we hope the president recovers from the diet he's on because... It, Either he and Al Sharpton are sharing the same dietitian, or something's wrong with the picture. I don't know what it is. 855. Now, isn't it interesting that Obama apologized about the drone strikes on the same day that the uranium scandal broke? Isn't it kind of odd because the man never apologizes? Did anyone say that yet on the Rush Cartel? Did you hear that yet from the parrots? No, I don't think so. The very same day that it came out that this country sold us down the river and sold our uranium to Russia, under Obama's watch, Hillary's watch, Bill's watch, all of a sudden Obama's Mr. Humble, and he apologizes for drone strikes that accidentally killed civilians. You don't put two and two together, huh? Well, okay, that's my job. I understand that. That's our job. That is our job. I need some music right now. No break. I need to pump myself up. What music do I want to hear? Play anything from the Rolling Stones for me right now, because... Tomorrow is going to be another long day, a six-hour flight. All right, turn it off. It's not doing anything for me. Garbage. It's like looking at your story about Bruce Jenner. It has about the same meaning. 
Four hours and 45 minutes going west to east. Five hours and 45 minutes going east to west. And there are no big planes going from where I am to the west coast. It's the nightmare of the 757. At least coming here, I was on a 767 with television. I could watch movies. I sat in the seat in the front. I tilted. I played with the seat like a barber chair. I watched three movies, and then I landed. It was wonderful. Luckily, I'm smart enough to eat before I get on the plane. Because as you well know, even in first class, there's no such thing in, in, in air. They did a bad, good job, I have to admit. American did a fabulous job. Nice stewardesses. Uh, actual women stewardesses, when I say stewardess, coming out of San Francisco, which is odd, isn't it? There were women and there were stewardesses coming out of San Francisco, which is a real odd one. And they were actually nice. But the food was good, but I didn't eat it. I didn't eat it. Now going back, though, is the nightmare flight. West to east, east to west. Tomorrow is the 757. I, can't, I don't even know what that's like. It's wearing me out in advance. The one good thing about going home is there's no packing really involved. The hard part's going, right? Because you have to select and reduce your entire life to a suitcase and a carry-on. Going home is easy because you throw it all back in the same bag. There's nothing to pick, right? So that's the easy part. I'm not panicking. Coming here, it's like it takes me four days to pack. Because you have to look. It's like you're dying and you're going to the next world. It should be like an Egyptian. You're going into the tomb. And you have to decide what you're taking into the tomb to the next world, right? Isn't that it, Ryan? My assistant's laughing. It's like, what do I take with me? What if it's the last? What if it's Malaysia Air, you know, and it disappears? What do I take? What do I leave in the house? Do I really need this? Will I ever wear it? Do I want it? But going's terrible. Coming back's easy. You throw it in the bag, and that's the end of it. So this is the Savage Nation. It's a radio show, the kind of show that Hillary Clinton hates, the kind of show that John Boehner would like to see off the radio. But thus far, they haven't touched the First Amendment yet. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Uh, I know the Clintons pretty well. I've, I've served with them uh, here for eight years. I've known them since then. And, uh, you know, they're good public servants. But there are a lot of questions that are being raised. And at some point, they're going to have to answer the questions. They're good people, uh, but there's questions that have to be answered. They're good people after the uranium scandal? You know, it makes you wonder, was Boehner left in a basket outside the 2 a.m. club? Or was there an embryonic twin that was missed at birth? Or, or is he the embryonic twin of the real Boehner? I saw there was an article on an evil twin found in a student's brain that explained all of the problems she'd been having her whole life. And they removed the tumor from the pineal gland. That was the evil twin. Uh, makes you wonder. I mean, maybe Boehner is is the evil twin. Maybe they removed the real Boehner. The real Republican was removed in either case. Or is this the real Republican? It's hard to say. Is there a real Republican or are they all the evil twin of the Republican Party? It's a nice analogy. I've kicked it around a bit. Yeah. Miss Carnanon told NBC she believed it was an evil twin sister who's been torturing me for the past 26 years. Sort of what I feel about the Republican Party. WVNN Radio, David, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hi, Dr. Savage. I was wondering, I'm trying to live up to your standard of a caller. Um, I was wondering why nobody in Congress is pressuring the NSA to produce Hillary's email. The answer is in John Boehner's speech, because they're good people. Well, it's good. The, NSA, the NSA could be forced to turn over the emails. I, I mentioned it the other day. It was common sense that they're somewhere in the cloud, right? In other words, she may have erased them, but they must have them, right? Yes, sir. I, I was watching a, a PBS documentary on unraveling the, the terrorist attack in Mumbai, and they... They admitted that having all those emails in the cloud doesn't do any good unless they're looking for specific emails from specific people. Then they can produce all of them. Correct. There's no such thing as erasing emails from a server to the NSA. They have everything ever written, correct? Yes, sir. Right. So if you wrote a, an email to someone and you erased it, it doesn't matter. Even if you had your server erased, it doesn't matter. They have them. So, therefore, Hillary's 30,000 emails are somewhere in the NSA. Well, I mean, and that's what, we, that's what we, the silly little people, would think, right? 
Yes, sir. Is that why is that why uh, Obama today went to the uh, security agencies and saluted them for being so wonderful? He was walking around uh, giving them all slaps on the back, the amazing shrinking president, S thanking them for being the best intelligence agency in the world, even though they missed the Boston Marathon bomber uh, and several other uh, illegal alien Muslims who were stopped by Americans who took them down themselves on airplanes and elsewhere. Remember that? The NSA missed it. The CIA missed it. The FBI missed it. A passenger took the guy down. Unbelievable to me. Well, look, we go on. We're not just going to give up. We have to keep functioning despite the government. That's what it comes down to. It's like we have to keep functioning despite the government. Or shall I say because of the government. 855 Now, here's the interesting thing. They just put Loretta Lynch in as attorney general. She would be the one to investigate Hillary in the next couple of years. Do you understand that? So now you know what that's all about. Now you know the rest of the story. You'd think with a Republican Congress, you'd get a Republican Attorney General. Or they would have blocked Loretta Lynch, saying, no, we're not having more of the same. We can't allow you to put your consigliore in again because uh, Holder did so much damage. This one's liable to do worse. No, we're not accepting it. Give us someone more balanced, someone more moderate, someone willing to look into the scandals. Instead, they chose someone who will absolutely not look into the uranium scandal. So that leads you to one conclusion. It's a one-party system, which I defined as a Democrat party or Republican party in 1994. And which I talk about in great detail in, in, in the new novel, Countdown to Mecca, where a bunch of generals, U.S. generals, decide to take matters into their own hands because they know the government is out of control. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Women get ahead, everyone gets ahead. And it's important to realize That's that a new thing, though. it's not just in the economic arena Whisper. where women are held back. When women of any age, whether on college I campuses like I'm in the Soviet Union, or military bases, or, communist China -like. or even in... Keep going. No, I want people to hear what's assault, coming. Assault? Then no woman, no woman is secure. No, you're an expert on assault of women. That's, you had a lot of practice with that inside the White House. No question about it. I mean, sexual assault was something you're an expert on. Since you looked the other way while it was going on right in the White House. So I would say you're an expert on it. Now, here's a story that's a little troublesome. Uh, California Assembly unanimously votes to name Famous Tunnel after Robin Williams. Now, it's a tough story for me to cover for a couple of reasons. I knew Robin just casually as a neighbor. He was a certifiably nice guy. But I was opposed, and I'm opposed, to naming the Waldo Tunnel uh, for Robin Williams for one reason and one reason only. It's the way he killed himself. I mean, the coroner's report was very clear. He hung himself with a belt while sitting on a little chair in his garage or at one of the bedrooms. Terrible thing to suffer depression. Terrible thing to commit suicide while your wife sleeps two doors down. But this means every time a child drives through the Waldo Tunnel, and it's named the Robin Williams Tunnel, and a child says, Mommy, who was Robin Williams? I mean, well, okay, well, he was a comedian who uh, hung himself with a belt on a little chair in a bedroom two doors down from his mother, from his wife. No, they're not going to say that. They're going to sweep aside what he did to himself at the end. A man's life is not complete until it's over. But the vermin in the California Assembly, the same garbage that is catering to illegal aliens, voted 77 to 0 today to name the tunnel for this poor man who hung himself with a little a belt on a little chair in his house in, in, in Tiburon, California. So that, I mean, you know, I know it's controversial. He's an icon to many idiots who don't know any better. They go, oh, no, I'm not jealous. I don't want a tunnel name for me. But I think a tunnel might be named, let's say, for an American war hero, hero who died in a copter crash, let's say, in uh, Afghanistan or Iraq. Maybe one of the local boys who gave his life defending America somewhere, they could have named a tunnel for them. Or maybe a CHP officer who lost his life to a piece of subhuman garbage instead of to a comedian who hung himself uh, sitting on a little chair in a bedroom in his house. 
That's all. That's the, that's the state I live in. And yet I'm going to go back from here to there, from there to there. There's, no, there's nowhere to go anymore. N'importe de du monde. I mean, the French said it all. Those of you who know French know what I just said. Who knows what I just said? Is there anyone in the audience who speaks real French like the way I did? N'importe de du monde. Who, who, who wrote that and why am I saying it? Is there anyone in the audience who can answer that question? I just said something in Parisian French. N'importe de du monde. Is there a French speaker who is listening to the Savage Nation? You'll win a free copy of my uh, new new novel called Countdown to Mecca. Is there anyone? Try to find that, Jim. I want to. I can't take it anymore. I feel like I'm living in a madhouse. Instead of naming it for a war hero, they name it for a comedian who hung himself on a little chair with a belt around his neck. Here's another one, another nice story about the cultural death around the world. If you think it's bad, strippers liven up funerals with erotic dancing in rural China. All right, for Bill Clinton, I could see that. That could be something I could see for him. Go out with a smile on the corpse. Chinese officials are launching a campaign to crack down on strip teases and other loot shows that have become popular at funerals. <laughs> Leave it to the Chinese to lead the way. The Ministry of Culture said, the ministry said in a statement that it will tighten control of a rural culture we have vulgar performances that have been thriving because of a general lack of cultural events. Sounds like the White House under Bill Clinton. Such erotic performances at funerals are a relatively new phenomenon. Many rural people believe the large attendance of funerals is a sign of honor for the deceased. And the, and the strip shows that are <laughs> used to attract more people and display the family's prosper <laughs> prosperity. Uh, the funerals also are a rare occasion for crowds to gather. As villagers working as migrant workers in industrial centers return home to bury the deceased, I don't know. There might be something there. Maybe the Clinton, uh, the Clinton Foundation, get involved with this. Maybe they could supply strippers to the funerals in China. They have good relations. Maybe they could use Sandy Berger to uh, to, to to run the deal, or uh, Rosenberg. What's his name? The one I mentioned yesterday who got the rockets flying. Maybe they could factor that. Oh, no, wait a minute. We have China experts, uh, se ex-secretary of state, that hag, the meatloaf woman, the brisket lady. I forget her name, the lunatic under Bill Clinton. I don't remember her anymore, the one who laughed while Serbia was being bombed, the war criminal. Madeleine Albright, she could factor the deal. Listen, I got a couple of good strippers for you. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, oh, yeah, don't worry. They're perfectly clean. No, they're all white girls. No worry. Yeah, they'll bring a big crowd. Oh, Bob Dole could be the the uh, lobbyist for it. Do you know Bob Dole, the ex World War II hero? Pipe stem arms. Almost was president. Then someone ratted him out with the picture on the treadmill with the with the undershirt. Bob Dole is a lobbyist for China. The last I checked, another American hero. Maybe he could bring the strippers to rural China and get some skim. You never can tell if there's a buck to be made. You know. Eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. You see, right? I'm trying to lighten it up because there's only so much I can take. I started the show talking about the Rosenberg case. If you just tuned in, and I'm not talking about something that's commonly remembered anymore, but the Rosenbergs gave away, sold, and actually gave away nuclear secrets and let Russia build the atomic weapon in the 1950s. Now the Clintons are allegedly involved in something analogous, but maybe even far worse. Because while the Rosenbergs only gave away plans for an atomic bomb, the uranium deal is such that the ore is used to actually make weapons. The only way to find out is by conducting an investigation. Now we have a French speaker on uh, WBAP in Dallas of all places. I didn't know they let Frenchmen in there. Albert, line four from WBAP. What's on your mind, Albert? Hello, uh, I heard you need a translator, so I'm here to help you. Okay, so if I say n'importe où dehors du monde, what am I saying? N'importe où is uh, anywhere uh, better, and neither of the words to make sense. Uh, what wait, wait, okay, well, hold it. N'importe où dehors du monde. N'importe où, monde is a world. No, uh, yeah, oh, so you don't really know. I was seeing if you knew the literary reference. It's a phrase from the existential era that says anywhere out of this world. N'importe où, dehors du monde. N'importe où, yes, uh, anywhere, n'importe I just said what it is. Yeah, anywhere out of this world. But thank you for calling. I'm going to send you a free copy of my new novel entitled Countdown to Mecca. Now I'm going to put out the thing again. Is there anyone out there who is not only a French speaker but into French literature and knows who wrote that? Who is the French philosopher 
or literary figure who said, N'importe de os demande, who I am quoting, then you'll get a free book. WJR, John, on another topic. Go ahead, you're on the Savage Nation. I just, I just wanted to mention about the Rosenbergs. In that day, when they got executed, we had real men running this country. Uh, they, I mean, you go back to FDR. When FDR found spies off the, on submarines off the coast of Florida, they brought, we brought them in and we shot them. That was the end of it. Right. The, uh, the German spies that were found off the coast of um, Long Island were captured eventually, and they were executed. That's right. And uh, the Rosenbergs were executed during the uh, presidency of, of Harry Truman, who had the cojones to drop two nuclear weapons on Japan to end the war in order to save the lives of one million American soldiers. He did a calculation because he knew what happened in Okinawa, Truman, how many men were lost taking Okinawa. And if they figured out, the generals, that if they were to take the homelands, the Japanese homeland would have been defended to the last man, woman, and child. That's a fact. And he decided that it's not worth losing a one million American servicemen. And that's why he nuked them. Dr. Savage, we had men running the country then. Well, that's right now we have men running from the country. Girly men, <laughs> whatever they are. Oh, then we, we had, yeah, then, then we had men running the country. Now we have men running from the country. Except, listen, that's why I use that French phrase, not to be an elitist. It's to tell you they're running from the country, but the statement was, n'importe où de os de monde. They're running from the country, but there's, where are they running to? There's nowhere to go. Anywhere out of this world, there's nowhere to go. Where are we going from America? This is our Alamo. We have to fight these rats. Right, you're right. You are we right. have to fight the rats. America is now the Alamo. The rats are overrunning the Alamo. You're there's right. nowhere to go. There's nowhere to hide. Just live with the sickness. Feel sick every day. There you go. I'm on a fight, Dr. Serge. Thank you. All right. I'm sending you uh, uh, the my novel. That's how I fight every day, verbally and through the written word. When I saw Boehner get up today and have the, the, the audacity to say that the Clintons are good people, I said, this is the end of the road. The gloves are off on Boehner. He's no longer going to be called Clink. Each day I'm going to try and invent a new insult. Today, I say, it makes you wonder, was Boehner left in a basket outside the 2 a.m. club? That I wrote on the, on the fly. Okay, stay on the line, my friends. How'd you find that? Who found it? Robert, you did? You Googled it? You could find that on Google? Baudelaire wrote that. I love Baudelaire. I love Baudelaire. And I'm not talking about a bread baker either. Baudelaire. I read him in college. I thought I was so smart. It's funny how when you go to college and you suddenly open your mind up from a poor background and a bad education, you suddenly think you're a genius because you read a, philo a philosophy. It takes you years to get over what you learn in college. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. But some of it sticks with you, you know. KSFO, Bill, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Oh, I wanted to quote uh, that poem by Charles Baudelaire. Anywhere you, I you, you knew it was. Well, then give us the whole, do you know the whole poem? In English. What is it? Let's hear it in English. The life is a hospital where every patient is possessed with the desire to change beds. <laughs> <laughs> did he really write that or you made that up? No, no, no. It, did he, wait, he wrote what? Life is a hospital where every patient desires to change beds? <laughs> yes. One oh, I lo didn't you love the French existential writers? I mean, come on. they were the, Now, of course, Baudelaire preceded the, the existentialists, but... How did he come up with that? Fantastic. Oh, it goes on and on. It's quite lengthy. Oh, let's hear more of it. I, I need some entertainment. All right. Suffer, uh, one man would like to suffer in front of the stove, and another believes that he would recover his health beside the window. <laughs> it always seems to me that I should feel well in the place where I am not, and this question of removal is one which I discuss incessantly with my soul. Tell me, my soul, poor chilled soul, what do you think of going to live in Lisbon? It must be warm there, and there you would invigorate yourself like a lizard. This city is on the seashore. They say it is built of marble, and that the people there have such hatred of vegetation that they uproot all the trees. There you have a landscape that corresponds to your taste, a landscape made of light and mineral and liquid to reflect them. My soul does not reply. 
Since you are so fond of stillness, coupled with the show of movement, would you like to settle in Holland? That be it? <laughs> you know, this is. Are you serious? Is this Baudelaire? What's the name of the piece? It's uh, anywhere out of the world. N'importe de Os the Moon. Exactly. That's what I'm starting to feel. Now, look, you got to do me a favor, Bill. This is so wonderful for me. You made my week. Send a link to this to my producer who's holding on the line, Jim, and he's going to send it to me. I'll tell you why. You just taught me something. I remember reading one of my favorite authors was Henry Miller. I don't know if you, you know Henry Miller, right? From you, I know him. All right. Well, Henry Miller wrote that when he would sit with his writer friends uh, in Carmel on the beach, they would sit and stare at the sea and talk about how great their life was going to be when they all went down to Mexico together. And they would plan the trip to Mexico. For months, they'd plan it. And they'd sit and reflect on how great it was going to be. Then when they get to Mexico and settle in, they'd sit on the beaches in Mexico and talk about how great Carmel was and how they couldn't wait to get back, get back there. I mean, this is exactly what I was talking about earlier when I said I was on the West Coast. I couldn't stand being in San Francisco another second. I came to the East Coast. Now I'm packing to go back to the West Coast because I'm hoping it feels better than it does on the East Coast. It's, it's the human condition, is it not? The grass is always greener, whatever. Well, yeah, or something like that anyway. You are really great, Bill. Did you just Google that to get that for me? I can I can do that. No, did you? How'd you find that piece so quickly with all of that in it? I I did I did look it up. Yeah, but what did you search? You know, you it doesn't mean that you're not hold it. You didn't cheat. Knowing how to search is actually a very high form of intelligence. I learned that in college. You have to know what you're looking for. What did you? What were the search words you used? You gave me the. You gave me the. Uh... Oh, so you put in the French, n'importe où. No, I put in the English. You put in doesn't matter anywhere out of this world. It came, it came up right. Unbelievable how advanced our search engines are today, Bill. Uh oh, I think I just lost the system. Something just kicked out. Lights just died. Are we still connected? Okay. Bill, stay in the line. I'm sending you a free copy of Countdown to Mecca. I'm sitting here waiting for Comcast to put me out of business. I'll be right back. I hope I'm here. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. <laughs> N'importe où, hors du monde. Cette vie est, est un hospital, hôpital où chaque malade est possédé des désirs de changer des lits. I'm doing this to upset the Rush Limbaugh cartel, to give them something to write about tonight, to call up and talk about me, and say he's reading French, he must be a real commie. Charles Baudelaire wrote, one should always be drunk, that's all that matters, but with what? With wine, with poetry, or with virtue? As you choose, but get drunk. Now, how's that for a line? How is that for a line, the friends of the Savage Nation? Thank you, Craig S. One should always be drunk, wrote Baudelaire. That's all that matters, but with what? With wine, with poetry, or with virtue? As you choose, but get drunk. Meaning, right? Passion, isn't that what he means? That's beautiful. That, I love that. That I love. That I love. And when I come back, there's more. Life is a hospital where every patient is possessed with the desire to change beds. One man would like to suffer in front of the stove and another believes that he would recover his health beside the window. It always seems to me that I should feel well in the place where I am not. And this question of removal is one which I discuss incessantly with my soul. Does that sound like you? Well, you're not alone. What with the incre incredible shrinking man in the White House? Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. We move forward when women who came to this country in search of a better life can earn a path 
to citizenship. Right now, they are being forced to work outside the formal economy, often being subjected to discrimination and even worse. What a good you know, one. our mothers and sisters you know. and daughters are on the front lines of all these battles, oh, but yeah. these are not just women's fights. Oh, these have to be no. America's fights sure. and the world's fights. Right. We have mean. to take them on, we have to win them together, right. and we have to have leaders who recognize that the time has come. Time has come to screw America finally. That would be no better than the Clintons. Selling off uranium to Russia is only the beginning, and that's only what we know of so far. Which is what led me to, I drifted actually, my mind drifted into a French poem I learned in college. And the words were simple, n'importe où de os de monde. And I asked listeners to call if they knew where it came from. And someone said it's from Charles Baudelaire anywhere out of the world. <laughs> he cracked me up because I never heard it in English. I'll read you one line because we have a gentleman holding from Montreal who's going to read the poem in French. And he wrote, this life is a hospital where every patient is possessed with the desire to change beds. One man would like to suffer in front of the stove and another believes that he would recover his health beside the window. It always seems to me that I should feel well in the place where I am not. And this question of removal is one which I discuss incessantly with my soul. I loved reading Baudelaire in college. Loved him. And I never forgot some of it. It just shows you what a liberal education can do for you. Now, the word liberal and liberal education are two different things, by the way. That's something that uh, the average Limbaugh cartel member would not understand. Since Limbaugh is himself a high school dropout, he doesn't understand that a liberal education can be quite enlightening, and it does not necessarily turn you into a liberal, per se, politically. But that's something that would re require reading and thought. And so, therefore, we now turn to Mordechai in Montreal. Mordechai, welcome to the Savage Nation. I understand you're listening online. That is correct, yes. And you know, the, the, you know Baudelaire in French? Well, I am Anglophone. Uh, do you know the concept of Anglophone and Francophone up here in Canada? Yes. Anglophone means I am an English-born uh, speaker, and I picked up French uh, going to school. Uh, like well, give, give us a little of Baudelaire in French. Let's hear how you sound. Okay. Uh, N'importe où hors du monde. Cette vie est un hôpital où chaque malade est possédé du désir de changer de lit. Celui-ci voudrait s'ouvrir en face de Poel et celui-là croit qu'il guérirait à côté de la fenêtre. Il me semble que je serai toujours bien là où je ne suis pas. That's a beautiful. You have you speak a beautiful. You're speaking, if I remember correctly, and my ear doesn't fail me. That's almost perfect Parisian French. Well, you, it's, you have a good uh, ear because uh, even though most Quebecers here speak Joal, which is like um, Cockney uh, English, I would compare it to. Right, right, or like Yiddish. I get it. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, my my teachers, uh, you know, I'm in my fifties. They they were uh, they were uh, Parisian. They came from France. And those I knew it. So they wore the berets. They they smoked the galoisie. Uh, they, they drank red wine. That whole thing. They caroused all night and they taught a few hours a week. Yeah, exactly. So uh, the typical Quebecer uh, speaks uh, different French than I. Uh, you know, I studied French for seven years in college, and I I, I liked the language. It was not easy. I couldn't grasp Spanish. I studied it for many, many years. I didn't like Spanish as a language. I studied the literature. I just couldn't relate to the tilde. There's something about that mm in the, in the tilde that I didn't. So I switched to French, and then I discovered French literature, and I really enjoyed the literature of France. I was uh, my mind was open, especially when I'm talking about something like Charles Baudelaire. I don't even know if he's taught anymore. He's probably too macho for today's uh, today's day. Possibly, but uh, it's a beautiful language and uh, very literary, as you say. And uh, I remember okay. studying the dialogues in those grammar books in French, and the ones that I remembered were the ones that might help me pick up girls when I was 18 or 19 and first going to France. So I remember there was a, a di you know how you learn dialogues, little ones like at the bicycle shop, in the mechanic, at the garage, in, in a supermarket, you know, little stuff, right? So I'm gonna, I see if I can remember this one. It, um, I can't remember. It was a funny thing. It was about a bicycle tire that blows out while you're bicycling. And the one line was, it's a matter of a simple repair. How would you say that in French? Un pneu crevé, a flat tire? No, how would you say it's a matter of a simple repair if you go in a bike shop and it's only a, a tire you need to say? It's a, it's a matter of a simple repair. How would you say that in French? Ça ferait l'affaire, une réparation simple. That's it. Right. Réparation simple. I, I, I studied that. I memorized it. So when I was 20 and I took my first trip to Europe, when I saw an attractive woman, I remembered that line and I went up to her and I said, it's only a matter of a simple repair. And I got to tell you, they laughed. It was a funny line. 
Okay, I have to tell you that... Um, right, do you get the joke or not? Yeah, I do. I have to tell you, my name Mordechai has a French uh, equivalent. It's Mardoche in French. Oh, come on, it is not. Yes, if you look at the Bibles, because it's a biblical name from the book of Esther. Well, I know the name Mordechai very well because of the great French-Canadian writer Mordechai Rickler. Well, exactly, exactly. I'm very well known here in Canada, my first name. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, are, you, are you a relative of mine? My mother, by the way, descends from a family in Montreal, incidentally. Oh, really? What is it? Yeah. I don't remember. I mean, I used to go there as a little kid, Mount Royal, teacups. Who remembers? Exactly. You know, it's, exactly. it's like remembrances of things past. I remember fine teacups and Mount Royal and sleds and snow. I don't remember anything else. Yeah, we're not. Mordecai, Mordecai, it's beautiful hearing from you. And if we can get your address, uh, we'll send you a copy of my new novel coming out in a few weeks, Countdown to Mecca. I love shifting gears a little bit. Don't you? I mean, we know how corrupt the Clintons are. We know how much they stabbed America in the back. We know that Obama's deeply in, in bed with them. We know Obama knew about the transfer of the uranium. We know that Obama has never, ever admitted he's been wrong about anything. And yesterday, suddenly, out of nowhere, he apologizes for a drone strike that killed uh, two Americans or an American and an Italian. Why would he have done that yesterday? It was to sweep away this growing scandal of the sale of uranium ore to Russia right under our noses while Obama was president and right under the nose of Hillary running for the presidency okay so we understand that KCMO in Kansas City Rick welcome to the Savage Nation what's on your mind yeah Michael again you hit it right on the head the one that's gonna be most upset with the Clinton deal is the king of the huckster speeches Obama the gravy train is gonna come to a screeching halt well, no, I heard that Obama's looking to uh, a location for his library, and his uh, minions are scouting out sites in, uh, in, I in Iran. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> but he can't make any... Well, he could probably give speeches in Iran and collect a lot of money. Iran, China, Russia. The very man he called Hitler might invite him to give a speech. <laughs> Very good. Maybe the Russians will invite him to give speeches, thanking him for the ore. Maybe uh, maybe when Obama goes to Moscow to give his first speech after the presidency, he can start by singing, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream and refer to the oars and sort of uh, move the audience slowly into the whole issue of uh, a yellow cake uranium. All right, thanks. It's a little, pushing it a little too hard, I get it. But it's all made up as I go along. N'importe où des du monde, anywhere out of the world, the life is a hospital. <laughs> I can't get over it. I can't get over it. I remembered one line from it. Women usually like this kind of stuff. Men don't like it at all. They think only sissies speak French. It's such a bias of the Rush cartel. They think cigars are good for them. Belching in public makes them a man. Uh, passing gas makes them a real man. Insulting women makes them an even bigger man. Polluting is the sign of a real Republican. Killing defenseless animals is the mark of a real man. I mean, I'm not that kind of guy. To be honest with you, not that I never was that kind of guy. Just read some of my earlier work, such as uh, the Nympho in Alley Pond Park. You'll see who I really am. Yeah, that was a good story. Yes, indeed, it's the Savage Nation, 855-407-282. Do we have any other good sound I missed? i got to listen to Hillary one more time. I, I will leave the world. Okay, let's go for one more. Oh, here's a good sound bite. A New York City assemblyman, David Greenfield, a Jewish man, was so incensed at the vermin unfurling a Palestinian flag during a memorial for the dead at Auschwitz that he attacked the vermin, the Palestinian garbage that were doing this, in a speech that is worth noting. Listen to clip 11. He had the guts to stand up to these rats. Listen. While we were discussing a resolution regarding the murder of 1.1 million human beings, I will point out that 90% of whom were Jewish, but the other 10% were political dissidents, they were Jehovah's Witnesses, they were gays, those were the people who were being killed together in Auschwitz-Birkenau. While we were discussing that, they had the nerve, the chutzpah, the temerity to unfurl a Palestinian flag and to yell at us while we were discussing that. Come on, keep going. 
Just play the whole speech. And so the reason I'm pleased is because we can stop pretending that this is about Israel when the reality is that every Middle Eastern country that is in existence today is not democratic and persecutes people of other faiths and persecutes right gays and persecutes people who disagree with them right and persecutes on. people on Twitter and persecutes women who drive except for one country, which is the state of Israel. Go! So you go! Tell today, those rats to drop dead! Blind Tell those rats to go back to the sand holes they That's what from. you saw, and that's what you watched, and that's what you witnessed. People who are upset for one reason. Do you want to know why they're angry? Do you want to know why they're unfurling that flag today? Because Hitler did not finish the job. He only wiped out half of my family. And only by the grace of God is the other half, me, the grandchild, still alive today. That's why those people are upset. Shame on them. Shame on them for hating Jews. Shame on them for hating people. Shame on them for disrespecting the most diverse, democratically elected body in the United States of America. And that's why we go to Israel. We go to Israel to make a message that is clear that we will not be cowered by this fear and by this hatred that we have, where these are people who would celebrate the death of Jews rather than mourn the death of innocents. I am embarrassed at what happened here today. But I am pleased that we finally see what this is all about. Good old-fashioned anti-Semitism. There's one Jew who's not going to take it. And, you know, you look around and you take a look at the people stamping on the American flag in Georgia. The big Muslim beards, huh? You take a look at who was stamping on the American flag. Big Muslim beards. They come here and spit on your flag. Ten people to a family, welfare, they don't work, and they cr they spit on your flag. They celebrate uh, Hitler, huh? And you want more of them in here? You want more of them in here? You morons. You When are you going to wake up to what your lousy, stinking, corrupt government is doing to you? Look, I'm talking to myself right now. I'm so angry. That's why I shifted to French poetry. Because there's a certain point at which I have to leave politics behind. It does not satisfy my soul. My soul begins to shut down. It, it just closes up on me. It disappears. It evaporates. It disappears into a small capsule somewhere in, my, in the deep recesses of my mind. My soul dies the more I do politics in this country, the less satisfaction I get. And so that's why I shift. My mind saves me because my, my, my wide education comes back to save me. In, in that darkness. That's something that you get from a liberal education. And don't confuse the words liberal education with a liberal political orientation. They're not the same thing. In fact, a liberal education will make you a conservative if it's a true liberal education. But that's something that would be lost on the Rush Cartel mouthpieces. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It is the Savage Nation. Such little time and so many big ideas to discuss. Let's go right to the callers. Line 6 from KVOR Radio. John. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Yes, uh, you like philosophy? I, uh, back in my master's work, heard a line from the melancholy dame Soren Kierkegaard. And the line was, logically systems work, existentially they're improbable. Interesting. Are you talking about Kierkegaard? Yep. Kierkegaard. Kierkegaard. People say Kierkegaard, but it's Kierkegaard. I did not ever heard that pronunciation. I mean, that's Danish, and I'm not familiar with the language. And so he said, again, please repeat it again in English. Logically, systems work. Existentially, they're improbable. So what does that mean? What does that mean to you, John? You can come up with a um, like anything in government or anything in life, but in real life, it probably won't turn out that way. Ah, okay. In other words, the best laid plans of mice and men. <laughs> sort of yeah. same same idea. Any time I hear someone give a system, flags go up because 
Exercise. You mean a sort of like Hillary taking a, an example from real politics saying that poor illegal alien women are oppressed and we need to give them citizenship. Well, we all know that existentially that can't work. Yeah, yeah. in real life, systems don't work. Yeah, in other words, making them citizens we know doesn't work. It's going to bankrupt the country to an extent we can never, not even imagine. Because you have the human element. Mm -hmm. As long as you have the human element, which is what existentialism is, you will never have probability. Well, you also said, you, you take a statement from the Bible, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Kierkegaard wrote, this contains what is presupposed, meaning that every person loves himself. Oh. Not everyone, but not everybody does love themselves. So when it says you shall love your neighbor as yourself, well, that's not probably going to work because most of us don't even love ourselves. Especially a liberal. Right. A liberal. So, so you're saying liberalism is built on a false premise. Yes. So what's the answer then philosophically, John, to get drunk? <laughs> oh, well, I might go for that. But um, the thing is to accept that humanity is not going to always follow the rules, is not always going to follow your system, is not things aren't going to work out because it works out on paper. So well, I know I know that Kierkegaard, one of the great philosophers, also committed suicide at the end of his life. Is that correct? Uh, that I'm not sure, but I wouldn't doubt he was the melancholy dame they called. Well, I believe he ended his own life because he couldn't take it anymore. So you have to watch out where your philosophy takes you. But I want to thank you very much for elevating the level of the show today because politics has its limitations. And, uh, John, if you'll stay in the line and give your name and address to Jim, he'll send you, we'll send you a copy of Stop the, uh, the, I'm sorry, the new book is <laughs> Countdown to Mecca, the new novel. It's exciting, and I know you're going to love reading it. It'll be out in about a, two weeks now. It is the Savage Nation. We're talking about yellow cake uranium, Bill Clinton's nauseatingly large grifters grift and hillary clinton's looking the other way join the savage nation call now 855-400-SAVAGE savage put it in the mega millions of dollars in donations to his foundation and for paid speeches now as you well know you're never going to prove that they were directly involved in this no way you can do it. They're too clever for that. They're not running these operations. He wasn't president because he doesn't know how to do these things. How does Obama get away with what he gets away with? How? So the issue is we need a um, hearing. We need a Senate hearing. The Republicans allegedly control the Senate, and they're not talking about it, are they? They're talking about nothing. Only a trial will tell us whether or not they had their fingers on the transfer. And whether or not the uh, chairman of our Senate Intelligence Committee and her husband had anything, or let us say, any knowledge of this transfer. If Dianne Feinstein, as chairwoman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, did not know about the transfer of America's uranium ore to Russia, then she should be thrown out on her dirty skirt. Her skirt's been dirty from the day she was the mayor of the sickest city in America. She's the chairwoman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, Dianne Feinstein, and she didn't know about the transfer of the ore. So either she didn't know about it or she did know about it. If she knew about it and she didn't say anything about it, then she's complicit in this crime. If she didn't know about it, then she should be fired immediately. But who am I appealing to? I'm only appealing to the American voters, not to that piece of garbage, John Boehner, that useless piece of garbage. I wouldn't use him as a clothing dummy. John Boehner has less utility than a mannequin in a store. At least you know it's a mannequin. Can you believe he says the Clintons are good people after a scandal like this? And isn't it odd that all the time we were transferring uranium ore to Russia, Obama was calling Putin Hitler, Hillary Clinton was calling uh, Putin Hitler. How is that possible? And by the way, don't we have a nuclear non-proliferation treaty with Russia? Then what do they need the ore for? And why would we give it to them? The questions I have raised are worthy of a six-month to one-year investigation by a team of reporters. I'm only a talk show host asking questions that anyone with any degree of intelligence and love for America would ask. Was Feinstein involved or not? 
who else in the government was involved and signed off on it? Where the ore go? How does the ore get to Russia? Is it shipped? Uh, is it sent over by airplane? How do they send the uranium ore to Russia? Or is it worse than you think? Are we actually weaponizing the uranium and turning it into fissionable material here and sending it to Russia? We don't even know how far this goes, do we? Well, I'm only a talk show host looking from the outside in. We have no government. We have a zero government, no government whatsoever. There is no government. We have a dictatorship. We have one-man rule. The whole West is sick in the head. You let in radical Muslims and you find out years later that they're plotting to blow someone up? You mean you couldn't figure it out by looking at some of them? In Sardinia, they were sitting there with their big beards, sitting there living off the fat of the land, collecting welfare, having 16 children, and guess what? They were plotting to blow up the Vatican. You wouldn't have thought that, huh? You just wouldn't have thought it because Obama's told you it's the religion of peace. And what have the Republicans done this week? What have they done this week? Why, they lobbied and voted for Obama's attorney general nominee, a lawless, out-of-control attorney general is coming that will make Eric Holder look like, a, like a, a Snow White. That's number one. Your Republicans did that. McConnell and the other Republicans fought for amnesty. McConnell and the other Republicans did not stand up for religious freedom. McConnell and the other Republicans pulled the plug on disapproving of the abortion mandate bill. There are many other things that your government did showing us the trouble we are in because we have an imperial presidency with virtually no government whatsoever. And to prove my point, the day after the disclosure in the New York Times that cash flowed to Bill Clinton in the form of his foundation as the Russians pressed for the control of a uranium company, which is probably the greatest scandal in my lifetime, it's bigger than the Teapot Dome scandal, which was nothing compared to this. And it's interesting, when I was in high school, they were telling us about the Teapot Dome scandal. We have a scandal much larger than the Teapot Dome scandal, and perhaps exceeding that of the Rosenberg scandal. And yet we open up the websites and we see Bruce Jenner. We uh, turn to the opposition party that doesn't exist and listen to John Boehner the day after the uranium scandal blows apart in our face. Listen to clip one. Uh, I know the Clintons pretty well. I've, I've served with them uh, here for eight years. I've known them since then. And, uh, you know, they're good public servants. But there are a lot of questions that are being raised. And at some point, they're going to have to answer the questions. They're good people, uh, but there's questions that have to be answered. They're good people? Isn't that what John McCain said about Obama in 2007? during the debates when someone said he's a Muslim and he doesn't love America and that McCain shut her up and said he's he's a good man now you got Boehner saying the Clintons are good people now what am I talking about the Clintons are allegedly involved in something analogous to the Julius and Ethel Rosenberg spying scandal of the 1950s but some would say it may even be worse you see the Rosenbergs stole nuclear secrets and sold them to the Russians they are American citizens. They conspired to commit espionage, and they passed information about the atomic bomb to the Soviet Union. And they were caught, and they were executed for their crime of treason. That was then, this is now. A House investigatory panel has summoned Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton to testify in a May 18th public hearing about our use of a private email server during a tenure as Secretary of State. You know that they're going to treat her with kid gloves, and you know that they'll exonerate her, and she'll look like a victim. And now I want to move on to something that's very important, which is 20 things I trust more than Hillary Clinton. 20 things I trust more than Hillary Clinton. They include a porcupine with a pet me sign. 20 things I trust more than Hillary Clinton includes Bill Clinton with my teenage daughter. 20 things I trust more than Hillary Clinton includes Mexican tap water, an elevator ride with Ray Rice. 20 things I trust more than Hillary Clinton include taking pills or a drink offered by Bill Cosby. 20 things I trust more than Hillary Clinton includes a Hillary Clinton war story reported by uh, Brian Williams. Things I trust more than Hillary Clinton include gas station sushi, Jimmy Carter with the economy, an ISIS traveler on a motorcycle. Things I trust more than Hillary Clinton include Pete Carroll coaching decisions, eating an apple from an orchard at Fukushima reactor number four. Yes, things I trust more than Hillary Clinton include my hitching a ride from a guy in a goalie mask or the ingredients in a baseball 
stadium hot dog. Things I trust more than Hillary Clinton would include Nancy Pelosi's grip on reality. Or finally, something I trust more than Hillary Clinton would include Jerry Sandusky as a Boy Scout leader. <laughs> oh, my God, what a world we're in. So if you expect this uranium scandal to bring Hillary to the realization that she's unelectable, you're mistaken. And the reason you're mistaken is you have no idea what psychosis is. I've told you a thousand times that anyone who runs for higher office, basically there's something wrong with them mentally. I don't care how good they are. There is something wrong with anyone who wants to be a politician. Or they're so corrupt that they have no other way to make a living. The human beings I know who are very competent, usually they have a profession or a business, they have no desire to be in politics, which is why we get the level that we get. That's to start with. But when you see corruption like this, you have to ask yourself, how could a country survive? How could a country survive? The only one of the bunch on the Republican side that I don't think is as corrupt as this would be the two of them, Rand Paul and Ted Cruz, cannot be this corrupt. It's impossible. Rubio looks to me like he's as, uh, as corruptible as any of them. I don't trust Rubio personally. I don't know him, but I, I mean, I get a bad feeling off Rubio. I think he's a sleazeball. He's the kind of sleazeball only Rush Limbaugh could back. The other two, all right, I would say I don't think there's any corruption in them. There are reasons I'm not attracted to them, but that, that's my own personal opinion. I would vote for Scott Walker until I hear something more from him. But we're focused today on the stink coming out of the Clinton sewer. And in a sane nation, there would be a demand for hearings today. We talked earlier that this is nothing new, we said. It goes back to Laurel Space and Technology. When Bernie Schwitz... Ah, what a wonderful person. Are you kidding? Came from humble Jewish background in Brooklyn. And look what he made of himself. A man starts out with such little in life. And through hard work and genius, look what he made of himself. So what if he sold technology to China that was allegedly giving them the advantage to bomb America with ICBMs? It was found nothing but right-wing lies. It was put out by those evil anti-Semitic right-wingers. I mean, he was cleared by the Justice Department. He's a wonderful grandfather in Brooklyn. Lives in Manhattan now, not Brooklyn. Wonderful man. If you look at him, a nut looks like Madoff, but a clean Madoff. There was nothing to that scandal of about Laurel Space and Technology back in 98. There was nothing but anti-Semitic right-wingers who did it to him. The same anti-Semitic right-wingers that were doing it to Hil Hillary and Bill right now, even though they're not Jewish, they're sort of Jewish. I mean, when Hillary and Bill are picked on, they're honorarily Jewish because they're, they're victims. They're being picked on only because of uh, their religion. Even though that's not their religion, it's, it's sort of like their religion. They're persecuted. They're persecuted because she's such a good person. That's what we're talking about. Will it stop one moronic woman from voting for her? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. What are you talking about? That you all do it. You don't know what, ma'am, do you know what we're talking about here, about the sale of, sale of uranium from the United States of America to Russia and approved by Hillary Clinton's State Department? Who cares? Who cares? They all do it. Now leave me alone. I'm heading off to the salon. I'm getting a touch-up. This is the country. Everyone votes. Everyone's equal. That's why we have Obama as president. Next, we'll have something worse. I want to shift, though, to something entirely different. A plane bound for Amman, Jordan, goes down in the Caspian Sea. The crash yields no survivors except the hijacker. And a cask containing an agent of unprecedented destructive potential is missing from the plane wreckage. A carefully plotted terrorist attack has been put into motion, and the resulting chaos might be enough to push America toward another costly war. Countdown to Mecca. It's a gripping page turner. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Well, as we come into the closing minutes of the Savage Nation uh, this Friday, I have to tell you, Ted Cruz did a very noble thing yesterday. He tried to block... The appointment of this terrible, terrible woman, Loretta Lynch, who at any speed is worse, is going to be much worse, much, much worse by our own words than what we've just lived through, through the reign of terror of uh, Eric Holder. 
So listen to Ted Cruz as he tried to stop the Republican bums from ushering her in. Listen to this. And I would note a particular onus falls on the new Republican majority. For several months, I've called on the Republican majority to block the confirmation of President Obama's executive and judicial nominees other than vital national security positions unless and until the president rescinds his lawless amnesty. I'm sorry to say the majority leadership has been unwilling to do so. Okay, listen to the next one. 24. The Republican majority, if it so chose, could defeat this nomination, but the Republican majority has chosen to go forward and allow Loretta Lynch to be confirmed. I would note there are more than a few voters back home that are asking what exactly is the difference between a Democratic and Republican majority when the exact same individual gets confirmed as Attorney General promising the exact same lawlessness. What's the difference? That's a question each of us will have to answer to our constituents when we come home. Now more than ever, we need an yeah. Attorney General with the integrity and faithfulness of law to stand up to the President. Attorneys General in both parties, Republican and Democrat, have done so. When credible allegations of wrongdoing were Richard, by Richard Nixon were raised, his Attorney General, Elliot Richardson, appointed a special prosecutor, Archibald Cox, to investigate regardless of partisan politics. When credible allegations of wrongdoing by Bill Clinton arose, his Attorney General, Janet Reno, a Democrat, appointed Robert Fisk, the independent counsel, to investigate those allegations. Eric Holder has been unwilling to demonstrate that same faithfulness to law, and unfortunately, Ms. Lynch has told the Senate she, too, is unwilling to do so. For that reason, I urge all of my colleagues to vote no on cloture and to insist on an attorney general who will uphold her oath to the Constitution and to the people of the United States of America. No. Unfortunately, Ted Cruz failed and the bad men won. The bad men run by the black hats under the leadership of the posse of John Boehner won and they put this woman in and we know what's coming. And that's a terrible thing. Believe me, it's a terrible thing. And we know that the scandal right now that is bigger than the Teapot Dome scandal, approaching that of espionage or sedition, the uh, yellow cake uranium coming out of our own ground, being sold to Russia right underneath our noses, and Bill Clinton profiting, profiting handsomely at the same time. Coincidentally, we don't know, but only a special prosecutor would be able to get to the bottom of that. You think that's going to happen under this attorney general? No, that's why she was ushered in by the Republicans because they don't want an investigation. And why don't they want an investigation of Hillary Clinton? Well, you'll have to answer that question yourself. And I have to conclude by playing John Boehner again, calling her a good woman. Let's hear it again. Uh, I know the Clintons pretty well. I've, I've served with them uh, here for eight years. I've known them since then. And, uh, you know, they're good public servants. But there are a lot of questions that are being raised. And at some point, they're going to have to answer the questions. They're good people. Uh, but there, there's questions that have to be answered. It makes you wonder if John Boehner was left in a basket outside the 2 a.m. club. Because there's no other explanation for this man's unwillingness to act in a manner befitting the Speaker of the House of Representatives. In essence, the leader of the Republican Party. Not one word of doubt about the Clintons. They're all good people. The same way McCain said that Obama was a good person when questioned about it when he was running for the presidency. Well, is Obama a good person? How did that work out for America? Well, that's it for the Savage Nation flying across the continent again tomorrow. Life is a hospital where every patient is possessed with the desire to change beds. And I'm going to change beds tomorrow night. Good night.